Hello! Oh my gosh, it's good to see you again. I'm glad that we're here hanging out. William Wood here, and today we've got some awesome content planned. In fact, by the end of today, I am going to teach you how to turn your mind into a money magnet. And this is one of the modules that we promised in the Max Profit Accelerator, and we're delivering it here today. So it'll also be part of our uh, part of our next level mastermind. But if you are in the house and you're excited to be here, give me a shout out in the comments. Let me know that you're excited to be here uh, because I am. I always look forward to this time of the week when I get to hang out with you guys and when I get to share some amazing content that's changed my life. But I want to start off by telling you about a time of just a couple of years ago when I had just gotten done making some terrible business decisions. If you've ever made a terrible business decision before, say I, right, post something in the comments and, and let me know, go, yeah, been there, done that. I made some terrible business decisions and I was down to like my last $5,000. And I still remember where I was. I was in a, I was in a, like this concrete room. Walls were concrete, floor was concrete, and it was cold because it was winter outside and I was sitting there with my wife and I had this $5,000 like left to my name and I was thinking about investing it into a coaching program because I knew that if I was just gonna leave myself to my own, my own devices that I was gonna, that I was going to um, just end up getting more of the same and at the time things weren't working quite right. And so I was talking to my wife and we were having this like deep heart to heart conversation. Do we take the $5,000 and use it as a safety blanket or do we take this last $5,000 that we've got to our name and do we invest it into something to improve my mind and my heart and get me lined up and focused in on my next round of business goals? We decided to invest in the coaching program and that investment turned out to be one of the best decisions that I ever made. So here's the question that I want you to I want you to ask yourself right now. I want you to ask yourself and I want you to post something in the comments, let me know. Are you right now attracting money into your life or are you repelling money? Does money just seem to fly from you like a deer runs from a predator? Or on the other hand, is money attracted to you? just like the magnet draws in the metal. What's going on in your life right now? Now, we're, we're gonna take this to a couple more levels. We're gonna ask, what about with people? Are people being drawn to you almost automatically without your even trying? Or do people seem to want to gain some distance from you? Are resources coming into your life opportunities or are they going away? Here's what I'll tell you. If you right now are not in a place where people, opportunities and resources are being drawn to you almost on autopilot, it is not the economy. It is not your business partner. It is not your circumstances. It is you. So that's both the good news and the bad news. The good news is it's you, you're in control. The bad news is it's you. And that means if you're waiting for something out there to get fixed, ain't gonna happen. And so by the end of tonight, if you pay attention carefully, I'm gonna teach you the things that you need to do to get yourself lined up so that you can start drawing people, opportunities, resources, and money in your life. Let me draw, let me draw you out something. And some of you have seen me draw this before, but this is one of the most important ideas that I've come across in the last few years. Let me just go ahead and pull this up. And uh, I'm going to do this so I can actually see myself. There I am. Hey guys. <laughs> okay. Let me just draw this out. People are the stewards of different things. Steward means someone who's like in charge of or someone who holds the keys to, right? So a steward holds the keys to these different things. Number one, people hold the keys to opportunity. Could be to speak in front of a group, 
could be to meet the right person, could be to get that loan that you need, could be to um, the opportunity to be able to get some key inside knowledge that will help you run your business, right? But people are the stewards of opportunities. People are also the stewards of resources. Now, we're not talking about financial resources yet, but we're talking about things. I still remember growing up that my dad's best friend owned a cabin and we had access to the cabin because my dad, because of my dad's relationship with his best friend. Almost any time we wanted to go up and spend a weekend, we coordinated with the, with the friend and we went and spent this amazing weekend or a week even from time to time up in the woods of Alaska, not because we owned it, but because of the relationship, the genuine relationship that existed. So people are the steward, repeat after me, people are the stewards of opportunity and people are the stewards of resources. And so if you have a lack of opportunity, if you have a lack of resources in your life right now, diagnostically, I want you to point your finger at yourself and say, I am to blame. Because what it means is, it means that you are driving people away and people take with them their opportunities and resources. Let's draw out one more thing. Specifically, people are also the stewards of financial resources. Whether that comes in the form of credit, whether that comes in the form of cash, whether that comes in the form of a check, people own and or control money. Right before I got on this uh, training call, I was on a I was on a call to explore training and coaching an entire division of recruiters for a professional services organization, and the director. I'll call her Mary, it's not a real name. The director, Mary, controls the budget of the, uh, of the company that could lead me to four to $10,000 for a training gig. Because Mary is the steward, she holds the keys to the financial resources, not of her own pocketbook, but of the company's pocketbook. So repeat after me, okay? I wanna drive this home because this is how you become a money magnet. You become a money magnet by understanding that people are the stewards of opportunities. Repeat with me, opportunities, resources, and financial resources or money. And that means that if you do not have the money flowing into your life, it also probably means that you are repelling people because people are the ones that are holding the keys to the door that can let you through to financial abundance. So how do you become a, how do you become a money magnet? How do you be how do you magnetize money to you? You've got to learn to draw people to you in a very specific way. And if you're interested in learning how you can become more attractive to the people around you. And I'm not talking about physical beauty. I'm not talking about going out and getting some plastic surgery, right? Like getting your face pulled back. I'm talking about becoming more attractive from a personality standpoint and from a standpoint of drawing people to you and to your business so that they bring with them opportunities, resources, and finances. Post something in the comments. Let me know that you're that you're ready to learn. Because this was one of the most important lessons that I could have learned. That when finances draws up, it is a sign that I have been repelling people, not drawing them in. Now, what order do these things show up, right? So we're talking about in your life, is it money that shows up first? And I'm going to argue that usually the answer is no. The very first thing that starts to show up, the very first thing that starts to indicate to you whether or not you become a money magnet or whether you've been repelling people is whether or not people are showing up. Are they showing up to your webinars? Are they showing up to your live classes? Are they showing up and landing on your landing page? Are they showing up 
to the different meetings and opportunities that people have to interact with you? Are they showing up on, in your social media account? And if they are not, then you also have a money problem. You also have an opportunity problem and you also have a resources problem. So typically speaking, the very first thing I look for is I'm looking to help somebody diagnose their financial condition is I'm asking them how many people, how many new people are showing up to your things. And if the people are there, even if the finances aren't there quite yet, it's usually very simple modifications that need to happen to magnetize, uh, to magnetize money to you. Because once people start showing up, people are willing to share their financial resources with people who will help them meet their needs. All right, what are you learning? I want, I want to see some comments down in the comments below. What have you learned so far? Post me a comment, let me know. If you're watching a replay of this, I want you to jot it down on a piece of paper. And here's why. We learn by teaching. And by turning around and teaching something that you're learning, you're also digesting and understanding at a deeper level. Okay, so let's go ahead. And if you just, if you stay tuned, if you pay very, very close attention, I'm going to give you a formula that you can use over and over again to start to line yourself up so that money flows easily into your life. And there's different levels for this. I've hit a level of success and right now I'm working on magnetizing the next level of success in my own life. And uh, there, I don't think there's ever an end to that, you know, until you become a trillionaire, you haven't hit the top of the heap, right? And becoming a trillionaire can only happen as you draw more people into your space and you serve more people. The cool thing about money is the only way to make money is to serve people through a product or through a service. More money means you have served and you have attracted more people. But let's talk about how to magnetize the mind for money because magnetizing the mind is really one of the first steps into drawing people to you. And we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a few things. I've got a few things planned, but I've also got a few things that have been spinning around in my head for a couple hours since I put my mind map. Here. This is my mind map. This is what my notes look like. It's a holy living mess to anybody but me, uh, but uh, it makes perfect sense to me. So, um, but I've had some thoughts since I put this together um, earlier on, and I want to make sure I share all the value with you. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about four different sequences of things that you're going to do to really work on your own mind. Now, the first reason that you're not drawing people to you, the first reason that you're not inviting more people into your life is that you're not clear about what you want. I'll never forget a few years ago, I was at a conference and I had made a presentation and a guy came up to me afterwards, very excited. And he says, I want you to coach me. And I said, okay, what do you want coaching with? You know, what, what do you want to accomplish? And he said, I want to be really rich. And I said, okay, well, like, what does that mean? And he said, well, you know, stinking, filthy rich. And I didn't know. So I said, well, what does stinking, filthy rich mean? And he says, so rich that you can't even imagine it. Which also told me that he, he wasn't imagining it. He had no idea. And then really this, we just kind of spun around in circles for about three or four minutes. And I said, you really don't know how much money you want to make, do you? And he said, no, not really. I have no idea. And so, so here's the very first thing. In order to draw something to you, in order to become a magnet for it, you've got to get clear on what it is. The other week, my wife and I were sitting down and we were deciding about what we want to do from like income and lifestyle over the next, over the next little while. And it became clear to me that we had run a pattern for some time. My wife and I, we live in Brigham City, Utah, and we've been there now 2007. So what, is, what does that come out to? Like eight or nine years? I, I don't even know, right? Math is my second language. And, and so we've talked about this over a period of time. We've said, well, is this our ultimate location? It's a great location. We enjoy where we live. We have great neighbors. Our kids have lots of friends. But we've said, no, this is not our final destination. And then we would have a conversation that would go something like this. Well, where do you want to live? Well, I want to live somewhere else. Well, where is that? I don't really know. And we would just kind of say, well, what about you? Where do you want to live? Well, I want to live somewhere green. Well, like what state? 
Well, it could be Oregon, it could be Washington, it could be Alaska, it could be a lot of places. Maybe we wanna live in Southern Chile for a little while, that's a green place. But it was kind of all over the place. There was no clear definition on it. When I asked my wife, are you driving the car that you wanna drive? She'd say, well, I like the car, it works. I'd say, yeah, I know it works, but are you driving what you wanna drive? And she said, well, not really, what do you wanna drive? I don't know. And so here we are, right? And we realized this is like a, a month and a half ago and we realized we are not being clear at all. How are we going to draw this new next level experience into our life if we don't even know what we want? It's like the guy at the seminar says, I wanna be super rich, right? How rich, really phenomenally rich. So you gotta be very, very clear on what you want. Do you want, uh, do you want a home in the country? What country? <laughs> what state? How big? How many? How many rooms? What's the square footage? I remember listening to a an old, old, old tape by by a motivational speaker named Jim Rohn, and he was talking about uh, how before he built his dream home, he had it so clear in his mind that he would bring people to the property that he'd already purchased where he was going to build it, and he would walk people through room by room what was in each room. That's a new level of clarity. And so my wife got together, my, I got to, we got together and we started the plan clearly. The size of the home we want, the city we wanna live in. We now know the next city that we're gonna live in. We, um, and, and we have two places that we're looking at, but we, we think we're narrowed in on, on one. So we know the city, we know the home. How big the home is, what the square footage is, how many levels it's got, we know the whole thing. She knows specifically the year making model of the car that she wants. And so do I. And really homes and cars are not the most important thing. It may be something else for you. But what kind of, what kind of experience do you want to have? Maybe you've got a seminar business and you, you've got a seminar business and what you wanna do is you wanna have a thousand people in your seminars. Are you clear about that? Or do you just say, I want a really big seminar? You gotta know the numbers. Maybe you got a network marketing business and you, you say, I want a big organization. How big do you want it? How many people do you want to have inside of that organization? And this clarity is incredible. In the moment that you become clear, you can reverse engineer the actions that you need to take to get where you wanna go. But the longer that you stay in a very unclear place, the harder it is to even draw it to you because you're confusing people as you talk to them about it. Well, what do you want? Oh, I want a nice home. People don't know what kind of opportunities to bring to you. What do you want? Oh, I want a big organization. People don't know what to do. What do you stand for? Oh, you know, I stand for prosperity. Do you know what that means? And so the clearer you are, the more likely it is that you are going to start to draw things to you. The less clear that you are, the more confusion you'll bring. Step number one is to get super clear. Now let's talk about finances because we're talking about becoming a money magnet. I was at a talk this last week by a guy who made his millions in the, uh, the the real estate business. And he now runs a seminar business. And he still has his real estate holdings, still uh, plays with real estate. But he, he was talking about financial independence. And he says, there's basically three levels of financial independence in my opinion. And as a multimillionaire, I had my ears open. I was taking notes uh, right here in my, in my magic green book. For those of you that have been around me, you know that I've almost always got an idea journal going on. This is not a deep thoughts journal. This is where I capture the good stuff. This is where I go to the sermon or I go to the class and I capture the notes. So I was sitting in this class and uh, the guy's name is Gerald. Uh, and Gerald was talking about three levels to financial independence, self-made um, self multimillionaire uh, coming out of the real estate business. And, and he said, the first phase to financial independence is not what most people think it is. He said, it is being able to produce income on demand that you know, 
But if you need $10,000, you can go out and create it. You don't have it in savings. You don't, um, you're, we're not talking about, you know, having some investment socked away. We're just saying the first level of financial freedom is to know that you can produce income on demand. He said, you could take away all of my assets. You could remove me from the area where I have all of my connections. You could parachute me into some other city and state in the United States, penniless, with no wallet. And within 30 to 60 days, I would have $100,000 in the bank. Can you say the same thing? And he says, because I have, I have achieved this first level of financial independence where I know that I have the ability to make money. Now this happens in phases. Right now, a lot of you are working on building your passion-based business, whether that's a coaching business or whether it's a, um, a network marketing business or whether it's some other kind of passion-based business. Here's the question I've got for you. Have you achieved the first level of financial independence? Or have you not? If you go in and put in 20 hours this month or 40 hours this month or 80 hours this month, do you know that you will get a return? If the answer is no, then you've got to get very clear on the types of people that you want to attract into your life because those people will bring opportunities, resources, and finances. And that's really what it boils down to. Now, I can't say that I've got that same level of financial independence as Gerald. I think it'd take me longer than 30 to 60 days to make $100,000. But what I can say is that I know as a coach, I know inside of my business, if I do certain actions, I get a certain result. How often? All the time. It's super predictable. All I have to do is to go out and to start taking the actions that I know that work. Okay, so we're going to go into the second level of financial independence. And we're going to wind back around and how to become a money magnet. The second level of financial independence, he said, was to um, actually let me let me go ahead and read it, to make sure I'm not not messing this up here. But the the second level of financial independence is to be able to make the amount of money in residual income that you need to cover your expenses. And he said, this really has two pieces to it. The first piece to it is that you can reduce your monthly expenses. And the second part is you can raise your monthly residual income. And he says, I always think in terms of residual income. And so this has to do again with people who are willing to pay for ongoing coaching, people who are willing to pay ongoing subscriptions, people who are willing to buy your products and services on an ongoing basis. And he says, the very first sale I'm ever interested in making in any field that I'm in is one that generates recurring revenue. And he goes, simultaneously, what I did in the beginning years is I reduced, I worked on reducing my expenses. I worked on paying down my debts. I worked on um, owning the things that I had. I worked on making sure that it cost less to live. And then I worked on building up my monthly residuals. He says, I have clients that make $1,000 a month in residual income, but they live in areas of the world where that pays for their entire lifestyle plus savings that they're putting away. He talked about a client that had moved to Bali and was living in Bali like a king on $1,000 a month of residual income. All of the expenses paid. Third level of, uh, third level of, um, uh, financial freedom, he said, was was having financial freedom to live off of the income of your assets so that you didn't have to produce any more money. And he says, I, for seven years, I went in, I worked the real estate business. He says, I can live today off of the income that comes from my, from my real estate holdings. I don't have to work another day. I choose to show up because I have passions and dreams and goals. So there's your three levels of financial financial um, uh, financial independence. So here's what I'd ask you to do, and this is helping you with the intention of helping you get clear. What level of financial independence are you at right now? Are you at level one where you say, I know I can produce money on demand? Are you on level two where you're saying, I'm building up my residual income? Or are you on level three 
where you're saying, I am building up assets and wealth that can generate my lifestyle even if my business tanked for some reason. Where are you at? Let's do some real careful observation. I'll tell you where I'm at. I'm at level one. I know I can produce income on demand. I know that when I take action, I can get results. I have mentors that are at level two and level three. And here's where, here's where we're winding back to this idea about becoming a money magnet because there's different levels of financial independence. What level are you pursuing right now? I am pursuing level two. Are you pursuing level one? Are you pursuing level two? Are you pursuing level three? Are you doing a couple of them simultaneously? But if so, this goes back to the clarity question, what is the dollar amount of residual income, for example, if you're looking at producing residual income that you need to produce in order to, to create that second level of income independence or financial independence? If it's to produce income, if it's a level one goal, it's to say, I just want to know, Will, that if I go out and I work, I can produce $5,000 in a month, or I can produce $10,000 in a month, or I can produce $20,000 in a month. Then that is your level of financial independence. But you've got to get laser focused and clear on what it is that you want. Are you with me? If you are, post something in the comments below. Let me know what it is that you're learning. I want to hear from you. I want to make sure that... Uh, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. Vanessa, if you could do me a favor, if you could post the um, the comments, I seem to have lost that thread. If you could post the the um, the link to the comments so I could get a peek at them here in a minute, I'd like to see what people are posting in the posting the notes. So how do you how is it that you magnetize your mind? So first you get clear, you define it. Right now, it could be as simple as a goal as getting clear on saying, okay, well, I know I can go out and produce income. I know I can produce ten thousand dollars a month. Now I want to produce $1,000 a month in residual income. Clients that are paying for ongoing subscription services. $1,000, that's it. That's not gonna pay for my expenses, but it's gonna nudge me in that direction. Are you clear about it? Once you're clear about it, you wanna focus in on it and you wanna break it down and you wanna break it down into a, um, hang on two seconds here. Oh, Oh, is it gonna let me log in? Vanessa, I may not be able to get in here. Give me two seconds. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what it's doing. Update all. Okay. Cool. Hang on. Let's go back one more time. Empower Network. Live now. Now I can see the comments. Woohoo! Let's see. Hang on. What is... I am just going to mute, um, mute this thing here if I can. Update all. Okay, cool. Hang on. Let's, let's go see. back one more time and power. Okay. I'm going to mute, mute it there. Okay, cool. I have some two stuff, but can't do the number one stuff. Okay. So we've got working on level one. Okay. David Dyer, I need to seriously focus on getting things down and clearly set spot on. Is it possible to do level two and not level one? Well, Janet, um, it, you can work on the two simultaneously, right? Um, so my question for you, Janet, um, and this is for Janet Green, he says, is it possible to be doing level two and not level one? Can you produce any income at all? See, if you can't make a sale, you don't need to be working on uh, building up your residual income. Now, the way to work on two and one at the same time is to work on selling subscription-based products. For example, the Next Level Mastermind. Next Level Mastermind is a subscription-level product. If you were to go out, you're saying, hey, I'm getting huge value from this product, and I want to invite other people into this product, you can simultaneously build your skill set of level one of going out and producing income and attracting people into your life while you're building up your residuals. So there you go. So, okay, cool. So we're, we're good to go. I hope that helped out. Janet, let me know if that helped you out. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to pop back over and get, get focused again. Let me get out of this over here. Yeah, no, I got, I got it, uh, Vanessa. I really appreciate you helping me out with that. So, okay. So you got to get clear in your intention and your focus. Right, so if you wanna produce $1,000 a month, and let's say that that takes you 20 clients of the next level mastermind, let's say that's what you're selling, is just as an example. You say, I'm gonna go out and get 20 clients in the next level mastermind, that's gonna produce me an income of right around $1,000 per month. And that's the way that you, you do that. So you're talking about how is it that I magnetize my mind to draw people to me and not to repel them from me. 
And that's the big question you ask. That is clarity. Focus is saying, okay, I've got 20. Now, for those of you, just in this example, let's say that we're using this example of selling the next level mastermind just because it's something you've all purchased. And most of you are going to be affiliates of this program. And if you're not, you can become an affiliate and you can learn how to resell the training that you're getting right now so that not only can you get awesome training, but you can get paid to show up, right? And I'd, I'd love nothing more than to cut you a, a payment, you know, from the corporate offices for your work and referring people in here. But let's, let's look at this. So if you know that it's gonna take you about 20, we're just gonna draw this out here, 20 sales, one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna take you about 20 sales to hit your first goal of $1,000 a month of residual income, and that's the type of income that you're working on. Okay. Okay, we're almost to 15 here, guys. Be patient with me. Here's what I recommend that you do because this is what it comes down to in terms of focus. Because this is how you magnetize your mind for it. Because before that, it's a real fuzzy goal. You don't know where you're going. It's kind of like my wife and I who were saying, um, yeah, we want a nice house, but we, we weren't willing to really commit to where it is. I recommend that what you do is up on a wall, you use the power of your mind to focus in on what you want on a daily basis. And this is part of turning the mind into a money magnet. You'd put up 20 spots that represent 20 customers that are going to be residual type customers, meaning they're going to buy and they're going to retain products more than one month. And depending on how you treat the clients and depending on the value that's in the products, people will hang around for one month, two months, three months, 10 months, a year. And some of that depends on how you're approaching them and who you're bringing in and how we do as a job, you know, how we do uh, providing service. And we've, I think we've got some cool stuff coming up and I won't announce it yet because it's not done, but we've got some cool stuff coming up that'll even add more value into what we're doing here. But if you look at this, what I would recommend that you do is you, you put up 20, like 20 drawings of people up on your wall. And then every time you get a sale, you take a picture, you print it out and you put their face on it. And then when you get another one, you cut out their face, you put it up there. Another one, you cut out their face and you put it up there so that you start to tell your mind, these are real living human beings and what I've got to do to create the lifestyle I want is I've got to go out and I've got to serve 20 people in a way that they want to be served. Because as the great Zig Ziglar said, you can have everything in life that you want if you're willing to help enough people in life have what they want. Let me give another example. Let's say that you're running, you're running a coaching business and you want to help people lose weight. And you've got a, um, you've got a hundred dollar a month weight loss coaching program. And that's all going to you because it's your program. Now, maybe you pay out a finder's fee or you pay out a, a commission check to people who refer people in. But let's say that you found them all. If you had a $100 a month weight loss coaching program and you had 20 people sign up for that program, that is $2,000 a month or $24,000 a year. And I'd repeat the same process. I learned this process when I was 19. I would go out and I would put up the, I put up a drawing of people that represented to me, this is a real life human being and I've got to learn to attract this person into me. I've got to learn to draw them in to find them and then to be attractive enough once they show up that they want to hang out. And then to start to fill that in with people and places. Now, the other way to do this, and this is another way of magnetizing the mind is you draw a, and let me just draw a new drawing here, and I won't draw out 20 just to save us time. But you draw out, you, you put a picture of yourself. This, this one you do with more like photographs. You put a photo of yourself right in the center. That's my photo of me, right? Now that's a hand drawing, obviously, but I go out and get a photo of me, I put it right in the middle. And then what I do is I'd go out and I'd find 20 photos of people from magazines, from uh, from the internet, and I just go print off those photos and I'd put them out on like a piece of poster board or on my wall. And then what I do is I, and these would be people that represent my ideal customers, so it'd be the right age, right sex, right, uh, right demographic information. And I'd put them out with arrows that point 
to me as a way of telling my mind, you are now attracting, working on attracting these people to you, right? So do a third one, men, women, I don't really serve children in my in my office very often, although sometimes they wander in, but it'd be mainly men and women that I'd, I'd put on there. And I would just get, if I was looking at attracting 20 clients, I would put 20 clients all around me, all with arrows pointing to me, to help me focus on what it is that I needed to do. See, one of the reasons that a lot of you aren't developing the income that you need is you don't know how many people you need to serve. And one of the ways to figure this out is first to get clear on your number. I wanna make, a, I wanna make $10,000 a month. Okay, that's kind of a fuzzy number if you don't know how many people you're gonna to have to serve. How many people do you have to serve? Because that's one of the numbers that I saw in the, in the live meeting. How many people do you have to serve to make it to $10,000 a month, if that's your goal? How many people do you have to serve on a monthly basis to make $5,000 a month, if that's your goal? How many people do you have to serve to make $20,000 a month. Make it tangible and guess conservatively. And there's no way to know that until you get clear and then focus. So once you've got your drawing, right? Once we've got our drawing, uh, however you want to do it, and there's, there's other ways to do it, this, just the ways I would do it. Once you've got your drawing out and you go, okay, I'm clear. I need 20 people this month. Okay, I need 20 clients this month to be able to hit my next goal of generating this residual income. What do you do with it? I recommend that you spend between three and five minutes per day, minimum, focusing in on that goal so that you are preparing your mind for what you're working on creating. Because all creation happens in three levels. And I'm going to go through this real quick because I teach this in, in greater detail elsewhere. All creation happens in three phases or three levels. Level one creation happens in the mind. And that's what we're talking about right now. Getting clear and getting focused. Repeat after me. First, I got to get clear. Then I got to get focused. One more time. First, I got to get clear. And then I got to get focused and focus will help you. So um, you got your 20, you go, okay, I want $2,000 a month. That's going to be uh, 20 clients. That's going to be 40 clients that I'm going to need to get of that residual type income. I might make more than that in one-time purchases, but I can make, I can make $1,000 a month with 20 clients, or I can make $2,000 a month with 20 clients. Then the next step, the next step is to go ahead and start to focus in on it every day for three to five minutes, visualizing what it is that you want. Now, there's different ways to visualize. One way to visualize is to redraw it. I call this doodleization. It's a process that um, I use all the time. I coined the term doodleization. Um, with help, I had a couple people recommend the name. Um, but um, doodleization is the process of drawing out the result that you want on a daily basis. It's one way to actively visualize what you're going to do while you're taking your pen and putting it on paper. The second, um, the second way to do it is you just take your picture that you've drawn and you, you stare at it, but the magic is not in the paper, the magic is in your head. And what you do is, is you look at this paper, you start visualizing the different faces, the different people, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll imagine sending out a little cord of light from my heart. This is, this is my, my right? My weirdness, right? Whatever you want to call it. But I imagine sending out a cord of love and light out to that person that says, I am here to help you. And I just kind of offer it to them. I don't force it on them. I just kind of let it hover about six inches to a foot right in front of them. And then I watch who takes it and who doesn't take it. Because usually when you extend a hand of friendship, people will shake your hand. Usually when you extend some light and love, people will take a hold of that and say, hey, thank you. I appreciate that. That's awesome. So, that is um, that is the process. Now, if I've got if I've got more of like the wall poster thing with arrows, again, I'm going to stare at it and I look at each of those faces that are there, and I just imagine that person, me serving that person, and acting in an attractive way. What's the most attractive thing to people? Love. 
And if you start to imbue your products and services with love, it's the most attractive thing that you can have. And you go, well, Will, how do I, I don't control the product. How do I imbue love into my product? You love people by giving yourself as part of the process. And that could be through video, that could be through audio, that could be through written word, that could be energetically for those of you that play in that arena by pouring your love energy and your yourself into there. And then when a per, new person comes on, you love on them and you help them get connected with the resources that they need to have the success that they want. Because remember, if you help enough people get what they want, you're going to get everything that you want. And hopefully you guys feel it for me. Like when I'm here, one of the things I do to prepare myself as I think about you and I, there's certain faces that come up over and over and over again. And I think about you and I think about your needs, your wants, your desires. I don't know, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing based on the comments that I've seen before. And I work on just pouring love into my little piece of paper, into my presentation as I build it. So that when it comes through, it comes through and resonates. And hopefully you guys feel that when you're here on the calls with me, like you are today because that's what I want to do. So again, we get clear. You want to get clarity and you want to pin it down to number of customers, which means number of people. How many people are you going to go out and serve to create, to be able to create the lifestyle that you want? Because I don't care what product or service or company you're in. The only way to get what you want is to serve other people and to help them get what they want. Help to match their needs to the products and services that you have that fill those fill those needs. Okay, after that, as you're staring, as you're staring at your at your image, or as you're closing your eyes and visualizing, or as you're doodling, you want to notice what comes up. And and here's what I mean by what comes up. How many of you, as you've been actively visualizing, have had some negative self-talk come up, or who've had like fear come up or have had a, a self-doubt of some kind come up. If that's ever happened to you, just raise your hand. Let me know that uh, that you've had um, that you've had that kind of experience. It's super normal. But I just want to show you that you're not alone. You are not alone. And here's what I'll say. I'll say if you become very sensitive to your own mind, you will start to notice the limiting, and these are limiting beliefs that are coming up. You'll notice the limiting beliefs that arise within you that are preventing you from getting what you want. Now, visualization exercises aren't the only place that these show up. We're going to talk about that with the next step. But just when you're visualizing, just when you've got your goal and you're pursuing it through mental activity, through focus, you're going to have self-talk come up that says something like, you're not good enough for that. You don't deserve that. That's too hard. You'll never make it. You can't even get one. What makes you think you can get 20? Oh, it's too expensive. People don't want what you have. You're a woman. You're a man. You're too old. You're too young. Or whatever it happens to be that runs in your head. Now, here's where most people make a mistake. They push those things off to one side without ever working through them. One of the reasons that your mind and my mind is not magnetized to the next level of success is because we don't push through the limiting beliefs that arise within us. And limiting beliefs will push away people. They will push away experiences. They will push away the opportunities, the resources, and the finances that can help take us to the next level. If you are pretty sure that you have actively pushed away an opportunity, a resource, or finances from your life at least once, you've sabotaged yourself by pushing it away, you know, it's just, it's confession time, right? Hello, my name is Will, and I have pushed money away, right? Just put something in the comments. Let us know that you've done it. And everybody does it to the next level. Uh, when, when you get to the next level, like meaning maybe you're comfortable when it's $100 a month, but you start to freak out when you start to ask people for $1,000 a month. Or maybe you freak out when you start to ask people for $3,500 a month. I know coaches 
that enroll people in programs that require $2,400 a month for a 30-minute visit. If you were to do that, does your stomach knot up? Or are you feeling open about it? Because it doesn't, it doesn't matter how long it is, it matters how much value can be packed into the time or how much value can you offer in the program that you're giving? How much value can you offer as a person as you bring people into your programs, your products, your services? Okay, you with me? So once you've got it, you're visualizing I'm visualizing my 20 and I'm noticing all my negative self-talk. I'm noticing all, and maybe it's not even self-talk. Maybe it's more of like a knot in the stomach or it's an image. I want to write that down and I want to capture it. And as I capture it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm then going to start to work on changing it. And that is going to be one of the key things that I do. Because in order to become very attractive, you've got to clear out your mind and you've got to clear out your heart. Everybody point to your head, touch your head with me. You got to clear out your mind and you got to clear out your heart. Let's go here for just a minute. Okay, so we've been talking about limiting beliefs. Now, the second thing that you got to clear out to become attractive to other people is you've got to clear out any kind of negativity or darkness that's in you. Now, those are my words. I'm going to explain that a little bit more for those analytical people that are listening right now. I love you and uh, you'll have a much better idea what I'm talking about in just a minute. But have you ever been around somebody, like this happened to me the other day, they come into your presence before they say more than like two sentences, you're just getting a weird vibe off of them. They're putting out like ick, right? If you've ever had that happen, raise your hand. Maybe you, maybe you went to a car a lot, right? Maybe you went, and that's not knocking all car salespeople, right? That's just saying you've been to a car a lot or you've been to a place, you went to that one networking meeting and that one guy just shows up and it's just like he's spewing ick all over you before he even says too much. It's because we cannot hide our emotions. About a year and a half ago, I think, I'd have to go look at the calendar, about a year and a half ago, I went in to go see a coach. She saw me for like a minute, like one minute. And she, she looked at me and she says, you're angry. And I got really mad. I was like, I am not angry, right? And I started like, you know, pointing and stuff. It was hilarious, actually, in retrospect. We have it on video. And no, I won't share it. <laughs> I am not angry, right? She like sniffed out this anger in me, like right away. It was a toxic emotion that was poisoning people all around me in the right or wrong circumstance, however you want to look at it. And she sniffed it out because, repeat after me, you cannot hide an emotion. If you've got hate in you, it shows up when you approach other people. And that's super unattractive. If you've got anger in you and you go to talk to your 20, how many of them are going to be driven away by the anger that lives in you? If you've got sadness or stuckness inside of you, is it attractive or repulsive? You see, if you want a bigger audience, if you want to serve more people in your business, whatever it is, you've got to clear out the toxic emotions that are like vibrational toxic waste to the people around you. That's not an exhaustive list. Betrayal, hurt, fear, guilt, shame. Those emotions tend to repel the people around you. And when you repel people around you, it's going to take a lot more work to draw people into your life. So how do you become a money magnet? You clear out the toxic emotions you've got in you. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna name some relationships, okay? This is gonna poke some buttons. If I have permission to poke buttons for a minute as a coach, that's part of my job, right? Is not to make you happy, but is to identi help you identify the areas of your life where you need to do personal development so that you become more attractive, right? Like Jim Rohn said, to attract attractive people, you've gotta become attractive. How do you become attractive? You become attractive by managing this, and managing this, 
right? So if I have permission to poke you guys kind of hard here for the next minute or two, give me a shout out. Let me know. Okay, we got a couple of yeses. I want to. I want to see a couple more yeses here before I go and and uh, and and really hit you guys between the eyes because this hit me between the eyes and this constantly hits me between the eyes. Okay. All right. We got we got four. I need one more. One more yes. Okay. We got we got it. David says hit me. Right. Poke away. So this is with lots of love, guys, and I mean that. So lots of love for me to you. And this is an area that I'm constantly working on because I am a human being and I am not perfect. But here's what I can say. The more I have cleaned out my emotions around these relationships, the more people have come into my sphere of influence. The more negative energy I have trapped around these relationships, the more I drive away the very people that I need to serve in order to expand my audience and build my business. So you with me? So part that means part of reaching the next level is clearing out your limiting beliefs, like I'm not good enough. Part of it is clearing out your toxic emotions. And that's how you really become a money magnet because you become a people magnet. And as people are attracted to you, people will bring with them opportunities, resources, and finances. Okay, so relationship number one. Relationship with your higher power. If you're blocked up, if you're angry, I'm just telling you, you're creating an energy that is driving a large proportion of the population away from you. Why? Because there's a large proportion of people that believe in a higher power. Now, I'm not saying you need to believe in one, but if you've got anger, if you've got fear, if you've got guilt, if you've got shame in that in that idea of, an, of a higher power, you are driving people away from you because they sniff that out and they run away. Now you go, well, I don't want to deal with those people. Well, that's fine, but you've just cut off something like 90% of America if you live in the United States of America. Now, if you live in another country, maybe it's 70%, maybe it's 80%. Because if you've got toxicity around it, meaning a toxic emotion built up around it, you've got problems. Now, I'm not saying you got to believe in something, but if you're angry about it, if you're sad about it, if you're feeling guilty about it, if you feel shame about it, if you feel hate about it, you've got a problem. And that problem is pushing people away from you. Unless the only group that you want to serve are angry atheists. And that may be who you want to serve. If that's the case, go for it. It's just not attractive to hold on to the hate. It's not attractive to hold on to the anger, even if you don't believe. You with me? If you're okay, I'll go on to the second relationship. Okay? But go ahead and just let me know if you're still doing okay. Can I give you more? Because there's like 10 of these things. Ish. I haven't counted them. Okay, somebody let me know. I'm just gonna pause here for a minute, take a nice deep breath. Okay, you're good. All right, sweet. So let's go on to the second one. Second one is your relationship with your spouse, partner, lover, whatever you wanna call them. How's it doing there? And this would also be with your exes. I'm not telling you to get back together with them. I'm telling you, do you have hate? Do you have anger? Do you have fear? Do you have sadness? Do you have stuckness built around that relationship? If you do, there is a good chance that you are putting out a weird vibe with a certain group of people. You're, draw, you're driving them away. You clean up that relationship, meaning you clean up the emotions on your end. Doesn't mean that you go back in and you hang out with them or you move back in with them. Just means that you clean up your anger, you clean up your hate, you clean up your fear, you clean up your sadness, you clean up the betrayal that's in you. You clean up this and you clean up this around that relationship and it will cut away things that are pushing away the people that want to come into your sphere of influence. Okay, next one. Children. I know that some of you that hear my voice have got broken relationships with your children. And from time to time, all of us have strain. I got, I'll have six kids. My wife is coming up on baby number six here. 
very soon. She's in the last three weeks. Doctor just told us today that if she goes into labor, that she's not, or maybe it was yesterday. Yesterday it was. A, a doctor told her that if she goes into labor, that she's not going to try and stop her at this point. She's full term, right? So we just got a couple weeks left. Yay for baby number six. But if you've got strained relationships with, um, if you've got strained relationships with your children, it is impacting other people that you're trying to become attractive to. And I can't explain to you how that works. I can just tell you that as you clean up that relationship, you'll clean it up. Now, I'm not saying that you, you can't force people to come back into your life, but I'm saying you got to work on your end of it. So for example, if I had anger towards one of my daughters, okay, I don't right now, but I have in the past. A little bit of anger, maybe, you know, for example, a few years back when my daughter did something that I felt like was a disrespect to me for like a minute. I held on to this for like eight hours or something like that. But I felt like it was a disrespect to me. And I held on to that and I let that resentment fester. Everybody who came into contact with me over those eight hours felt it. It was not an attractive energy. To emotional toxicity repels. And you are limiting your audience size. You are limiting the number of customers that you have. You are limiting your ability to influence based on the stuck emotions that you're keeping inside of yourself. So you got to clean it out. Now, I can't control what my daughter does, but I can control the emotions. And what's interesting is I did some emotional release processes to let go of those stuck emotions. As soon as I did that, the relationship started to move in a healthier direction. If I had let that go for a long period of time, the relationship would have continued to go down. So we can't heal other people. We can only heal what's in here, what's in here. And there's lots of processes. We'll go through some of those processes another day. But for now, I just want to point you in a direction. I want you to say, start looking for the tools. There's thousands of them. They all work. They all work for different people. Find an emotional release tool so you can start to let go of stuck emotions. All emotional release tools are going to fall into three, well, three or four broad categories. Okay. I'm kind of going back and forth on whether one category is two categories or one category. And I'm, I've kind of flip flopped back and forth on that. Okay. One category is what I call reframing. If you're not familiar with any reframing strategies, I recommend Byron Katie's work. It's called the work um, Buy any of her books. Uh, I think a good one that I just read was loving what is that gives you a reframing strategy. Reframing is taking something and giving it a different meaning or a different context. And she has some really powerful questions. She has four questions that can help you turn around your life. So that's one category of changing an emotion or changing a thought is through reframing. The second category of clean doing emotional release work is changing states. And that's like an NLP. We talk about re-anchoring. Re-anchoring is a powerful process that helps somebody change their states. It's not the only way to do it. Uh, to change a state, but re-anchoring is one of the most effective strategies that I know about, and that comes through the field of uh, neurolinguistics or NLP. The third category, and I'm going I'm to break them into four. The third category is what I call energy healing techniques. This is a huge field, and there's lots of different techniques. One type of energy healing technique would be like the emotional freedom technique, and some of you have seen me uh, demonstrate that, and there's a bunch of different uh, variations on that. You know, uh, whether you do you know, um, you know, whether you do the, the, you know, this kind, um, or whether you do any of the other kinds, you know, with or without affirmations, they all work. So now the emotional freedom technique is not the only energy healing technique. I am aware in my, in my area, there's a huge energy healing conference that comes out every year. And there's more than a hundred presenters that each present their own energy healing modality, just like literally like right across the street from my office. There's a ton of them. I've invented an energy healing uh, process and that works really, really well for people. But you can find uh, an energy healing technique to help you release emotions, whether it's cranial sacral therapy or whether it's Reiki, whether it's uh, the emotional freedom technique, whether it's uh, my, my variation of energy healing work that works. But that's the third bucket. The fourth bucket I'm going to call spiritual healing techniques. 
and I, I used to lump these together with energy healing techniques and they might be, but I don't think that all energy healing techniques utilize a connection with the divine. And some do. And those energy healing techniques that are leveraging uh, spiritual energy, I think they feel a little bit different to me than those that are using um, maybe a different type of energy, uh, like a bioelectric energy or an acupuncture based energy. The feel of the technique is different. So right now I'm four buckets. Reframing, uh, we've got uh, changing states, which includes things like re-anchoring. Uh, then we've got, uh, we've got energy healing, then we've got spiritual healing. So if you've got stuck emotions, if you've got toxic shame, if you've got toxic anger, if you've got toxic hate inside of you, what I'm going to invite you to do is I'm going to invite you to start reaching out to heal that. So we've got a couple relationships. We've got higher power. We've got spouse. We've got kids. Let's go through a couple more pretty quickly. Your relationship with significant men in your life. This would include father and brothers, teachers, um, instructors, mentors. How's your relationship with those significant men in your life? Is it good? Is it bad? If it's bad, if it's toxic, you are again, you are sending out, you're broadcasting a signal that is pushing away the very people that you need, that you need to draw into you. And so one of the ways you become a money magnet is to become a people magnet, you become a people magnet by clearing out the negative energy around you. Some of you listening to my voice right now have massive issues around men, men and women listening right now. You've got massive issues and you will drive away a major segment of your audience until you clean that up. I used to have some pretty significant energy around key male relationships. So I can speak from this one, like from my own, from my own perspective. In the moment I cleaned up those relationships, more men started to show up in my life as clients and customers. I also had some pretty stuck emotions around a couple of major female relationships. Okay, now some of you may put another category in there. I'm just gonna leave it male and female if you wanna add in a third category. Um, that's fine, some people wanna put in transgender as a thing. I just say human beings. If you've got stuck emotion around a human being, male or female, then you've got to go and and clean up the energy that, that, that's there because it is repelling people who vibrate at that frequency, people who are feeling in that way. You are limiting your audience size. So we've got higher power, we've got spouse, lover, partner, got children, men, women, that's five, okay? Now let's go into stuff. And we're gonna wrap up here in the next 10, 15 minutes. I've got a lot of value. If you're getting value, I want to hear about it. Go ahead and let, get, uh, send me a put put a note down below and let me know if you're getting value from what we're going through here today. I want to hear about it. Can you guys still see me? For some reason, when I'm on the page, it is not showing me. Hang on. I want to make sure you guys can actually see me here. Somebody shout out in the in the things. Okay. Yeah, okay, so getting good value, good. Okay, there we go. Okay, you guys, it looks like you guys can see me. Okay, so yeah, this is good stuff. This will change your life. Okay, my video is back. Okay, I don't know why it disappeared there for a little bit. Um, yay, hopefully I didn't disappear for too long. Okay, so we got five. Now let's go into relationship. And these are not in any particular order, by the way. If you say, well, I'm not ready to tackle a higher power thing, but I can totally clear out emotions around an ex-spouse or an ex-lover, um, go do that. Just clear out the anger, clear out the hate. I can clear out relationship around my kids. Just pick one and go there. So here's number six. Number six is your relationship with stuff. I know this sounds crazy. Try it out. Watch what happens. How's your relationship with your car? How's your relationship with your house or your residence? How's your relationship with the objects that you own? Do you have hate in there or resentment or guilt or shame? Work on healing it, okay? These again are not in order. Relationship with self. Are you holding on, and this is definitely not in order, okay? 
I would place that one much, much higher. How's your relationship with yourself? Are you holding on to guilt, to shame? Earlier today, I saw a woman in her 40s. By the way, I always change some of the details. So this may or may not have been a man, may or may not have been a, a woman in her 40s, but the, 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 the uh, thing was real. This woman in her 40s said, I have major body issues. My lover tells me that my body is awesome, but I just look at my body in the mirror and I have hate. Wow. Okay, wow, that's powerful. That kind of energy repels even the people that are trying to love you. So how is your relationship with your stuff? How's your relationship with yourself, which includes things like your body and your mind? Some people say, I am at constant war with my mind. That constant war is driving people from you. I'm not saying you gotta heal it today. I'm saying I'd put that on the list of personal development things. To turn yourself into a money magnet, you've gotta become attractive to people. And to become attractive to people, you've got to clear out the war. Okay, are we good? So we've got seven, right? We've got higher power, lover, spouse, exes. We've got children, men, women, stuff, self. Eight, money. Let's see what I got in my pocket here. I think I got a couple hundred dollar bills. Let's see what I got. I usually do. Not always. Okay, I got $200 in my pocket. How is your relationship with money? Do you have fear around money? Do you have anger around money? Do you have resentment or guilt around money? Do you have pain around money? Here's what happens. I was just talking to a guy yesterday. I'm training him to be a coach. I started training him in an ener this energy healing modality that I created. I require for certification, I require people to have thousand hours of, of uh, training, which includes classroom training and book training and practice training. So a total of a thousand hours for level one certification. And, um, and he said, wow, Will, I was at one of your presentations and you were asking people for money and you were so calm while you were asking for money. He goes, I realized as I was watching you that I have major money hangups. How is your relationship with money? Now, there's a level at which all of us, or at least most of us, will push money away. Maybe it's at $10 an hour. Maybe it's at $100 an hour. Maybe it's at $1,000 an hour. Maybe it's at $10,000 a month. Maybe it's at $50,000 a month. Maybe it's at $100,000 a month. But there's a, there's a number for most of us at which we stop feeling like we deserve and those monies, those money fears, those angers, those shames, those guilts, those, those twisted emotions of hate will push it away. So even when the people show up, when it comes time to ask for the money, you choke. You start getting weird. You send out weird body language. You start doing push away movements. You start saying things that will secretly sabotage them, giving you the resources that they have willingly because you've got energy around it. And so I tell people, find an emotional release technique. I already talked about the four big categories of emotional release techniques. And find one and inside of each category, there's thousands of tools. There's not just one approach, there's thousands of approaches and most of them work. Some of them will work better for some people, some more for others. That's the way that things work. Nothing always works the same for everybody. But you start clearing out your money fears, your money shames, your money guilts, and you'll watch that it becomes easier to ask people for money. I know someone who's pretty prominent in our community. I'm not gonna name him, I'm not gonna embarrass him. Oh. You lost video again. Hang on. I'm going to shut this down. I think it might be. Okay, let's see. Vanessa, give me a thumbs up if you lost, if you can see me. Am I back? Well, I could always see you here. Let me check the page. Okay, that's probably because I had both pages open. I just closed down the other page. Just let me know if I'm back or not. Yes, we see you. 
Okay, cool. So hopefully everybody can see me again. So, um, so we're back on to this idea of uh, you know clearing out your relationship with money so that when you ask people for it, you're not feeling weird about it. And so if you've ever had the experience of asking somebody for money and getting a little weird about it, let me know. Or you're fine recommending somebody else's product, but as soon as it's one of your own products that you're gonna be compensated for, how many of you are gonna get weird? So I was telling the story about uh, this guy in our community. I'm not gonna name him by name. He's very, very good at selling things sub $500. But I have watched him over and over again as he goes to make $1,000 and the $3,500 sales and the higher ticket sales where his stuff comes up. I just watched a post this week on Facebook. Pretty popular post. A lot of people liked it. And as they were liking it, this guy was ranting about how uh, how he didn't feel like he should be charging for coaching. Now, I'm not saying he should or he shouldn't, but there was a lot of energy that was there. And I looked at it and I said, oh, that's pushing people away and that's pushing money away. You've got to look at it. If you've got toxic energy around money, you're pushing it away when it comes your way. Even if the people are showing up, you're pushing away the money. Okay, so let's go through. We, I think we're up to, we've got uh, higher power. We've got lovers, exes, spouse, whatever you want to call them. We've got, uh, we've got children. We've got men. We've got women. We've got self. We've got stuff. We've got money. That puts us at eight. Let's go to number nine. Number nine is time. Do you feel any kind of bound up emotions around time? If you do, you're driving it away. And time is the currency that all of us use to get what we want. Time, okay? I don't have enough time. I always feel strapped. I can't do it. Those are the nine that I'm gonna give you right now. I didn't count them. I told you there's right around 10. Now, uh, there's probably one or two more we could add in there, other categories. But those are the big ones. That's enough to get started. You wanna start to clear yourself out. As your relationship improves in each area, with each of those things, you will watch more people show up, more resources show up, more opportunities show up, and more money show up. Not in that order. Usually it shows up as people, opportunities, resources, and finances in that order. I can almost predict the way that somebody's income is going based on the order and sequence that things show up. That's not universal, but that's pretty. It's a pretty good rule of thumb. Okay, so we've got clarity and intention. We've got focus. And as you're focusing in on your goal, you're noticing what of your stuff is coming up. And here we're going to do, um, we're going to do one more thing. And then I think we're, we're going to wind up today because we've gone long enough. There's more, there's more to teach here, but this is plenty to get you moving in the right direction. So one way you get your stuff is you look at your goal, you focus in on it with intention for three to five minutes. You notice what your stuff is that shows up and then you write it down. What emotions show up, what thoughts show up, what beliefs show up. And then you start work on clearing those out, letting them go so that you can come back to it. And here's what happens for most people. When you start looking at your dreams and your goals and you feel no negative energy, but you feel totally aligned with it, it's yours. The first thing that we align is we align our thoughts. The second thing that we align is we align our words. So the second thing that I ask people to do is build up some affirmations around what you want. And again, if you're giving the affirmation out and your mind is snapping back with negative energy or negative self-talk, you've got some healing to do. And that's part of what's blocking people, opportunities, resources, and finances from coming your way. The third way to get it is to create with your actions. You go out and you take inspired action. So as I'm looking at my 20 people, I'm focusing in on it. I'm also getting some ideas about what I might do to create that. Then I go out and I take inspired action. And I realize that as soon as I start chatting with somebody on Facebook, fear shows up. There we go. I know now that my job is to release the fear, to clear the fear so I can take that next step. So the, the three things that will show you where you're bound up and where you're stuck in your own personal progress to become a money magnet and to draw people into your life are visualization, focus, affirmations, and inspired action. Hold yourself to an action. When I get people to lose weight, I say, pick an action. 
one I recommend for a lot of people is tracking their calories. And I say throughout the day, as you try to hold to your number, what comes up? Feeling of deprivation, feeling of exhaustion, feeling of overwhelm, feeling of sadness. The inspired action, the action that is lined up with your goal will expose the limits in your thinking and the limits in your emotions that has you blocked up and bound so that you cannot get what you want. And if you are not getting what you want, there's knowledge to get, right? There's like, I got to learn certain skill sets. But if you, you're getting the skill sets, if you're developing them, but there's fear or anger or hate or limiting beliefs, limiting statements that are showing up in your mind, those things are preventing the flow. And so there you go. That's what we got for today. There's more I could do. I've got a whole... Um, I've got a whole cycle that maybe I'll share with you another day where you can go and really put this into a framework for start exposing things. But what I say is get clear on what you want, focus in on it daily through some sort of visualization process. If there's any obstacles that show up as you're visualizing, write them down and clear out the energy using one of the four categories of techniques that we talked about. Three, use affirmations. Speak what you want. Notice what kind of negativity comes up. Copy it down, clear it out. Take inspired action. As you're taking inspired action, notice what kind of thoughts and emotions are coming up around it and work on clearing those out. And if you do that, you will start to develop into a magnetic personality that draws people into you. Here's the shortcut. The shortcut is to step into love. Love yourself and love the people around you. And as you do, you will powerfully begin to attract the people that need you. And here's what I believe, if I can get serious with you for just a minute. I believe that there are people that are counting on you to step up and to be great. Will you do it? That's my first invitation for you today. Will you do it? Will you step into your greatness? Will you spend the time that it takes to get clear? Will you spend the time that it takes to clear out your thoughts and emotions that are limiting you? Will you take the time to clean up your relationships? Okay, so one more, one more invitation. Are you willing to identify one relationship that has stuck emotions or stuck energy on it and to start the work of clearing it out. You can do it in as little as five minutes a day. Last year, I worked on clearing out that anger and it took me like 200 days and magic happened all along the way. Every little layer of anger that got released opened up new opportunities and has drawn new people into me. Powerful, super powerful. This year, as I've cleared out some of my new thoughts and beliefs that I've identified, more people have showed up. The reason that you're here right now, I believe, and we're having this little talk is because I have done the work to clear out my mind and my heart. Is there more work to do? Oh my gosh, I'm human. Of course there's more work to do. There's always a next level. But as you work on clearing it out, the people that need to show up in your life will show up. And the only reason they haven't already shown up is because you're blocking them by holding on to your toxicity. So will you let go? Will you do it? If you know one relationship that you need to clean up, just one, we gave you nine, right? Gave you nine. Write down in the comments which one you're going to work on. That'll be your public commitment to clean up the energy in your life. And again, there's other categories. Maybe there's one I didn't mention. And so you can say, hey, it's this category. You will, you didn't mention it, but this one has a lot of negative energy around it. And so I'm going to work on cleaning that one up. Because uh, there's certainly more than nine categories. Okay, last thing. The last thing is a reminder. Next week, next Tuesday, uh, we're going to be doing a couple of things. And I want to make sure everybody that's here remembers. Uh, number one, we're bringing Stacy Springer back on. Uh, she was the one from the Max Profit Accelerator that talks about how to use the media 
to build business. But Stacy's just an amazing human being. We're gonna replay 30 minutes of her content that we recorded in Denver. We're gonna chop her segment down because it was more like an hour long segment. So we're gonna play 30 minutes of her content and then afterwards we're gonna do some live Q&A and this is a great time. Now Stacy is a, is a chef and she has used the principles that we've been talking about to build her business. And since recording in Denver, I've gone to visit her at her, um, at her kitchen, which is in her home and oh my gosh, she does an amazing job. And she does a good job, not only in teaching people to cook, but in mentoring and coaching people as she does. Uh, it was a blast. I really loved hanging out with, uh, hanging out with Stacy. So Stacy's going to be, be back. So if you've got a goal to build some residual income, this is your chance because one of the ways that you can get people to um, you can make a little extra money is you can become an affiliate if you're not already for the next level mastermind and you can invite people to check out what we're doing, right? So the live content, the live Q&A becomes part of the library that'll be back here for the uh, next level mastermind, but also I'm going to toss in some bonus content over the, over the week as well. So make sure that you promote the link. And Vanessa, if you could put um, tonight, if you could put in the link that they need to promote to get people onto the list so that they can get emails. I think it's maxperformancemastercourse.com with the affiliate ID. But if we could just post that in the Facebook group, that way there's no confusion, that would be awesome. And um, you lost video again. Oh, no, okay, You're post you'll post it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so anyway, so that's it. So if, if I call this the Costco strategy. If you want to bring people in, the easiest way to bring them in is bring them in for value. Let them get a taste of a little sample taste of what we're doing. And then if they like it, they can hang out and they can purchase more. And if they don't like it, they don't have to purchase. It's a win-win for everybody. We give free information. We give some high quality content that we usually charge for. The person gets some free stuff. If you invite somebody and they like what they see, you get a commission. You can build up your residual income and work on building your um, work on building towards your goals and your dreams. So that's it, guys. If you have any questions for me, I'll be watching comments. I'm going to post a little recap video, a very short recap video um, in the Facebook group. Love you. I look forward to seeing you next week with Stacy Springer. Look forward to some bonus content for us uh, from us next week. And I'm going to talk to Vanessa about that. And make sure that we're all squared away. And and then the following week, we'll be back with some more amazing content. Love you guys.